Hello, welcome to Benjamin Tree. Today what we're going to learn is how to create a ordinal number using a function. So instead of going through and typing first, second, third, fourth, fifth, what we're going to do is to create a function that will read a number and then automatically add the correct last two um, letters in order to create that ordinal number. So that way we'd have first and second third, fourth, etc. Okay, because if you have hundreds or thousands of numbers, you don't want to do that by hand. And you might never need to do this exactly, but we can just become more familiar with these different functions. So that way, if we have something else that we need to do, we're really familiar with it, and it's easier to build more complex functions. So let's go ahead and start. So instead of just typing one giant formula straight away from beginning to end, we're going to break this down into small pieces and make sure it works. And then we're going to keep adding and adding more pieces. And we're going to use other cells just to test a new section before we add it to our main formula. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to see, does the number end with one, two, or three? Because in English, first, second, and third breaks the normal pattern of th. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with an or, okay, and we want to find the, we want to see if the right part of the number, so here for number one, we see the very last character is going to be equal to um, one, two, or three. Okay, so what you notice here is that for this or, I've done equals then I've done squiggly brackets one, two, or three. This is called an, an array. So instead of saying, right, does A2 equal one, does A2 equal two, or does A2 equal three, I can put it all into one here. So I'm gonna hit enter, but we're gonna have a little bit of a problem, okay? Even though it's true, it's gonna come out false. What we need to do is says, does the value of right to a equals one, two, or three, because we want to turn that last number into an actual number, because when we pull with right, it's coming out as a text. So let's take a look. Now it's saying true. Okay, so right now it says, does the value of the last number or the last character in right equal one, two, or three? Okay, so if we pull this down, okay, one, two, three, yeah, it is true, and the rest are false. All right, so we got that first part down. Now, we just don't want true or false. So if we have a one, then we want to have ST. If we have a two, we want ND. If we have a three, we want RD. And everything else, we want TH. So let's make an if statement here. So if the value does equal one, two, or three, what should we do if it's true? So we're going to choose the function choose. Okay, so let's take and choose. All right, then it says give us an index number. So we're going to say write a two. So tell us pick the last number there. Okay, you're saying, hey, why aren't you using value? Well, for choose, we don't need to change it into a value. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to put the first one, if it's a one, so if it comes out as a one, value one, put an st. Okay, if it comes out as a two, put an nd. And if it comes out as a three, put an rd. Okay, so that's what we're going to do if it's true. If the value of the last number in the number in column A is equal to one, two, or three, choose STNDRD. And in order to find what number we're choosing, we want to pull the last number. All right. If none of these are true, okay, if it's a 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, then what we want to do is just to play TH. Okay. Oops. There we go. So as you can see, we have 1, so it pulled ST. So let's drag this down here. So one is ST, two is ND, three is RD, fourth, fifth, sixth. We jump down to tenth, but we have another problem here. 
We have 11, it's ST. We have 12, it's ND. And it's 13, it's RD. Okay, so English breaks lots of rules, and so it makes this writing this function even more difficult. So we're going to have to add in a new section to see if the number is 11, 12, or 13. So let's add a new one. Again, it's going to be very similar to looking for does it end with 1, 2, or 3, but this time we need to see does it end with 11, 12, or 13. So we're going to make another or. Now we want to find out the value of the of the text, the last two. So we're going to say on the right-hand side of the text of A2, and we want to pull two characters out. Okay, we want to see does that equal to 11, 12, 13. Okay, so we have an array here, and we'll talk more about arrays in another lesson down the road. Okay, so we're going to pull this out. So right now it says one is false because it doesn't end in 11, 12, or 13. But when we pull it down here, it says it's true. 11, 12, and 13 is true. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to pull out this part of the equation, and we're going to add it to our first one. Okay, so let's take a look here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new if statement. Say if, okay, the last two letters are equal to 11, 12, or 13. That's the thing it's checking. Let's put a comma. What should we put if it's true? If it's true, put a th. If it's false, then do the rest of that giant equation that we've already put. Okay. So let's take a look at what happens here. Okay, so we're going to do first, second, third. We're going to drag it down to the 14th. Now you can see 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th. So our equation, when it gets to here, it says, all right, these last two digits here are 11, 12, and 13, so I need to put a TH. Okay, and when it gets to 14th, it says, all right, these last two digits aren't 11, 12, 13 so I need to check if they're one two or three the last digit which they aren't so I just put th okay the last thing we want to do is instead of having two separate cells why don't we just say a2 okay we're going to print a2 here okay and then it's going to say ampersand it says all right take the value of a2 and then just put the value or whatever this giant equation puts so that way it will combine the actual number plus the ordinal ending. So we put it here, now it comes as first. And we drag it down here. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Jump to 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th. Jump to 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. So now as you can see, we were able to take this giant equation. We built it piece by piece, and it makes sense along the entire route. And we can see how, it, how the Excel sheet is thinking as it goes through this entire formula. Okay, there's a bit of a complicated one. So for practice, go ahead and try to do that again. Okay, but what I want you guys to do is try to build it from scratch. Okay, kind of do it the same way I did. Pull one piece and build it from there. Because when you're writing a computer program, you just don't write the entire thing, tippity-tap. Ten hours later, you hit enter and you run the program. Because you're going to have so many problems. Because there's going to be, you know, when you're writing these things, there's going to be mistakes. So what you can do here is build it from scratch. Okay? And while you're building it from scratch, you're getting familiar with how these pieces are working. And also, if there's an error, then you can more easily figure out how to figure out where the problem is. You can troubleshoot it a lot more easily. Okay, so just don't copy it from the last sheet. Try to build it on your own because just copying what I wrote in the previous sheet doesn't really help them learn. Okay, and also I wrote five steps kind of to help you guide like okay find the value if the value of the last number in column 8 equals 1, 2, or 3. Start with that. Yeah, go back and take a look to try to get a refresher but try to build it on your own and keep adding these pieces together. When you finish, you can check your answer on the answer key. 
Well, thank you for using Benjamin Tree and learning how to create an ordinal number using a long and complicated formula. I hope you're able to learn a lot. You can download this Excel file at the blog provided in the link. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment on the YouTube channel or please leave a comment on the blog. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.